You're listening to Reimagined Radio. Real talk, real life, real magic. Welcome to Success Unlimited with Dr. Patricia Thompson. If you want to be more successful while also being happier at work and at home, you're in the right place. We'll be covering research along with little tweaks, tips, and hacks that will help you to fulfill your potential in the business world without sacrificing your peace of mind. How meaningful is your work? So I'm not talking about whether you're the equivalent of Mother Teresa tending to the needy or like Bill Gates who has a lot of money and you can impact a lot of worthy causes. What I mean is how meaningful is your work to you? Do you get excited when you think about your work? On Sunday nights, do you look forward to Monday morning so that you can jump into the week head first doing something that you really love? Does your work contribute to a sense of purpose and passion in your life? Now, Jim Collins, who's a very prolific business author and a management guru, once wrote that it's impossible to have a great life unless it is a meaningful life. And it's very difficult to have a meaningful life without meaningful work. Now, judging from the fact that a lot of the videos and uh, pictures that I see on Facebook that go viral are about how much people hate or even dislike their work, it seems to me that a lot of people don't find their work very meaningful. And so if you're in that camp, then this episode is for you. Uh, Today, I'm going to give you eight tips that you can use to make your work life more meaningful. And believe it or not, they don't require you to quit. Instead, what I'm going to do is help you to do some mindset shifts and take some really easy actions so that you can better appreciate the job that you have right now. So let's get started. Now, when you're feeling dissatisfied with your job, the natural tendency can be to focus on everything that's wrong with it. You know, maybe you dislike your boss or you're tired of waiting for a promotion that seems like it's never coming, or maybe you feel like you're just not making a difference in your work. Now, if that sounds like you, then the first thing I recommend you do is to take a bit of time to think about your core values. You know, what's really important to you in your life? So to do this, you can get out a sheet of paper and you can brainstorm your values and then try to pick out your top five. Once you've done that, take a bit of time to reflect on the ways that your job actually aligns with those top five core values. So for example, um, if helping others is something that's important to you, then you could think about the ways that you help people, either directly or indirectly. So, you know, if you're a customer service person, then obviously it's pretty clear how you help people. But let's say you write, say you're a freelance writer. Well, you help people indirectly with your um, advice that you give. Or if achievement is something that's important to you, then think about all the goals that you've accomplished on your job. And you might even want to write them down so that you can get more in touch with how your job helps you to fulfill that value. And for a lot of people, what this exercise does is that it helps them to see that their job actually does help them to express a lot of their values. And that realization can help to you know, deal with some of the negativity that they might be feeling. Now, there are some people who, on the other hand, do the exercise and discover that there's really just too much of a disconnect between their values and their work. And if that's you, then that could be a great wake-up call for you that maybe it's time to take some steps so that you can start to move on and find something that would be more fulfilling to you. Um, I actually wrote a blog a while back about getting in touch with your values. And so if you want a bit more information on that, then go to my website at silverliningpsychology.com and you can search for values using the search bar. Um, I think it's on the top right hand side of the screen. So that's tip number one. Now, the second tip will also help you to deal with being overly negative about your job. And it's simply to practice gratitude. So by focusing on the things that you appreciate about your job, you might find that your whole experience of it changes. Now, an easy way to put this into practice is to take some time at the end of each day to simply write down three things you're grateful for in the workplace. You know, maybe you had a small win or maybe you had a big one. Uh, Maybe you had a nice time chatting with a client. Maybe you got paid that day. 
Whatever it is, just write them down. And what you'll find is that as you get in the habit of looking for things to be grateful for, you'll likely notice more things to appreciate. Because after all, if you know you're going to have to be writing this list at the end of the day, then it gives you more incentive to be looking around for things to be grateful for. And then as you focus on the positive, you might find that your attitude about your job might just change because you're noticing things to be grateful for. Okay, tip number three is to pretend that your time is limited. Now, I know this might sound a little bit morbid, but hear me out. So I'm sure we've all heard stories of people talking about how, you know, a seemingly really bad illness or some other really bad negative event was one of the best things that happened to them when they look back on it. Now, in some cases, it's because it was a wake-up call that encouraged them to make some much-needed changes in their lives. But for others, it's because it allowed them to better appreciate what they already have. You know, um, this isn't a traumatic illness, but I've hurt my leg before. And when it was injured, you know, I had a much better appreciation for it not being injured. It was something that I took for granted. Um, And so similarly to what I mentioned about gratitude... If you pretend your time is limited, it can help you to see things in a new, more positive light. And there was actually a research study done with some undergraduates that highlighted this. And so in the study, the researchers told them to pretend for the next month that it was their last month in their particular city and to live the next month that way. So it was kind of like they were pretending that they were going to be moving in a few weeks. And what the researchers found was that the group of students who were told to do that their sense of well-being doubled compared to a control group. And basically, they just appreciated things more. You know, they spent more time with their friends because they thought they might be moving away or they were pretending that they were. Um, You know, they better appreciated the things around them because, again, it was almost as if that wasn't going to be there anymore. And I know I've had that experience myself right before I was about to move or leave a job. Um, I just appreciated things more. So if you want to try this out, then for the next month, imagine that you're going to be leaving your work in a month's time. Now, of course, don't do anything stupid. So don't go around telling people off or don't stop doing your work altogether. Um, Obviously, that's not going to turn out too well for you. And you might actually be leaving your job in a month's time. But, you know, if you do this with some judgment, Um, then you might actually find that you're more aware of the parts of your job that you would miss. And then with that realization, you might even develop a greater appreciation for what you already have. Okay, tip number four is to build your relationships. Now, I think most of us know, you know, if you watch TV or read in the media, that our personal relationships have a lot of benefits for us. First of all, you know, they bring a sense of richness and meaning to your life. Um, And having supportive relationships is also great for your mood, your general outlook, and believe it or not, even your health. Now, professional relationships are good for you too. And in fact, research shows that if you have close connections at work, you're more likely to be satisfied with your job. So if you are one of those people who tends to make work all about work and you're really focused on separating business from pleasure and you're just focused on getting the job done but not really relating to the people around you, I encourage you to look at things a little bit differently. And in fact, I want you to try to be more intentional about building relationships with your coworkers. Now, the benefit of this is, like I said, it will help you to feel better about your work, but it'll also likely make you more effective on the job. Because, you know, the better relationships that you have, the more likable you are, and the more pleasant you are to work with, the more likely you'll be able to influence people or work well with them or collaborate more effectively with them. Now, of course, you're not going to spend all your time socializing with this recommendation. But again, if you do it in an intelligent way and just work to really build those relationships, you'll likely find that your work feels more meaningful to you. Okay, tip number five is to take time to recharge. Now, I've worked, you know, in coaching, but I guess actually I've worked alongside as well some people who I would describe as workaholics. These are the people that give everything to their jobs, and as a result, their jobs are all-consuming. Okay, so there are some people who do this because they're passionate about their work, 
and it's meaningful to them and they just can't get enough of it. And it's something that's really satisfying to them. And if that's you, then that's not what I'm talking about here. So what I am talking about is people who feel overwhelmed by how much they're working. You know, they might've even started out liking their job, but because their life is all about work, then they start to find themselves resenting their job and just having a lot of negative feelings associated with their work. So the way to deal with this is actually pretty easy. Simply give yourself permission to take breaks. Um, I actually did a blog about this, not a blog, sorry, a podcast about this. Um, I think it's the first episode, so you might want to listen to that for some more tips on taking breaks. But just give yourself permission to do it. You know, develop a hobby, hang out with your friends, take time to enjoy yourself. And what I found is that when people do this, when I actually encourage clients to do this, first of all, they're less stressed because they're not spending all their time working. Um, But what it also helps them to do is to reconnect with the parts of their jobs that really bring them joy because their job isn't something that's totally negative anymore. Instead, you know, they're able to enjoy it. Um, because they're getting that chance to recharge in between. And they also are still able to keep up with everything. So make sure you make time for self-care um, so that you you know won't find yourself resenting your job. Tip number six. Now, if you feel like you could do your job on autopilot, then it just might not feel as inspiring as it did when you first started. You know, a lot of us like to feel like we're continuously growing and stretching ourselves. And so if your job has become pretty boring to you, then it might not feel as meaningful to you. So if your job is pretty stagnant or you feel stagnant in it, then what I encourage you to do is to see if there are ways that you can challenge yourself so that you can bring some more excitement to your job. So one way you could do this would be to meet with your boss and see if you can take on a special project or assignment, you know, something a little bit different. Or you could ask your boss or maybe find a mentor who could coach you so that you can get yourself ready for a promotion. Or maybe you could sign up for a class so that you could learn a new skill that you could apply on the job. Or if you're self-employed, you know, again, you could find a new skill or maybe offer a new service so that you can have a new challenge and something a little bit different. And what you'll likely find is that if you feel like you're being more intellectually stimulated, then your job might feel more inspiring and meaningful again. Okay, second to last tip is to look for opportunities to volunteer. Now, if you're in a big company um, and your workplace is already involved in the community, then it can be pretty straightforward to see if you can volunteer because a lot of like big organizations already have that set up. If you're in a smaller company, um, you could potentially head up a volunteer activity if nothing is already set up. So for example, I used to work in a smaller company and we used to periodically have a walk run event that we would sign up as a team for and we would raise money for a good cause. Or we also adopted families for Christmas and then we bought gifts and delivered them to them. And it was a way that the whole office really came together to give back. Research has also shown that volunteering actually physically makes you feel good. And I can personally attest to that because when we would pull up at the houses when we bought the gifts and we would see the gratitude that people expressed, it was incredibly rewarding and you would drive home feeling amazing. And research has also shown that volunteering can help to deepen your relationships at work with your coworkers. And as I've said, When you have those deeper relationships, that also makes your work life more meaningful. So the key to doing this is to make sure your heart is in the right place as you're doing it, because research has actually also shown that if you're only volunteering for self-serving purposes, you know, like to pad your resume or to try and make yourself look good to others, then you're not going to get the same benefits from it on a personal level. And then my last step, number eight, is to make sure that you're taking small steps. So take some pressure off of yourself and don't think that you need to totally upend your life by quitting your job and becoming Elizabeth Gilbert so that you can eat, pray, and love your way to a more meaningful life. Instead, take some small steps. So for example, if when you made your list of core values, you realized that certain ones weren't being fulfilled, then brainstorm ways that you could express them in your work. And if you can't come up with a way, then, you know, think of ways that you could express them in your life outside of work. 
it's great to have, you know, your work showing a lot of your values, but work isn't everything. So as long as your values are being expressed in your life as a whole, and there's a balance there, then that's likely going to make you feel a greater purpose. And then once you've come up with those ways, don't just sit there with the knowledge, take action. It's pretty empowering to know that you're taking life by the horns to live with greater intention and purpose. So remember, it's your responsibility to make your life more meaningful. So do something about it. I'm going to end with this quote from the legendary actress, Katherine Hepburn. I love it. She said, if you have to support yourself, you bloody well better find some way that it's going to be interesting. I couldn't agree with her more. So take that quote to heart and find a way to make your work life interesting. And actually, here's a challenge for you. I want you to pick one thing you can do to make your work life more meaningful, whether it's one of the eight tips I shared or something else, and do it today. Remember, it's your responsibility to make your life meaningful, so why wouldn't you start today? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. That's it. And as always, feel free to look me up on my website at www.silverliningpsychology.com or follow me on Twitter at Patricia underscore ATL. Have a great day.